excavation is done. Now in this video you're going to see the process for cutting, sizing, and installing the sauna tubes. Um, and these are cardboard concrete forms, easy to use, easy to install, and they work great for managing the volume of concrete that will go down into the holes here. vertical relief in the length of the sauna tube just because this particular round is a little greater than 24 inches uh, in diameter and it's a snug fit down into these augered holes. Now this doesn't really cause an issue for volume um, or for strength of the, the pylons here for the concrete and once I fill this sauna tube with mud it's going to contain all the same volume and it will expand just a little bit and still keep the shape at the top of the round. Here we'll see Rowan putting together these little rebar crosses with the chair to hold the posts down inside the sauna tube. The purpose of having the steel at the bottom of the sauna tubes here is to create resistance for the post sinking any deeper into the concrete, number one, and then the chair separates the rebar from the actual bottom of that post as well. And this gives a certain amount of density to the bottom of the concrete as the base of those pylons with a solid six inches of clearance, um, creating a nice solid footbed before encasing the uh, post um, above. Now you'll see that I'm pretty brave with the grinder and for the most part it's pretty harmless but you do have to consider what direction the wheel is moving and where it is throwing all those metal shavings and I highly recommend you wear a face shield and for some of you you might want to wear gloves or long sleeves if you're doing this all day. So Kate and Rowan have the fun and messy job of laying down this Henry's emulsion sealant um, <laughs> on the bases of these posts. This is going to seal the bottom of the post and keep it from being in direct contact with the concrete. After this emulsion dries up a little bit, we then wrap it in Vicor, which is a bituthane uh, tape, as you see here. And then I'm going to knock in these 20D galvanized nails to give some resistance and stability when the concrete cures up. Once the posts were sealed up properly, we were ready to drop them into the holes. And you'll see that we'll brace these posts up now and get them relatively close to plumb, but not perfect. There will still be some minor adjustments to be made before we stake these off and make them permanent. Probably noticing the string line is now up and my batter boards are in to help align posts 
and define square and you'll notice I'm adjusting and readjusting trying to find square and get all these posts aligned not only north and south but east and west as well as trying to keep them plumb at the same time. This is probably the most delicate part of the process in ensuring that I do find square and make certain allowances here for my tolerances because these posts are green they are going to twist and bend a bit so I'm trying to take all of that into consideration while also trying to achieve square. Now you'll see that I'm adjusting and readjusting my posts and get them to conform to my string line, not the other way around. After a few visits to the engineer's office, I realized that two things had occurred. We needed to make a slightly more beefy center foundation for the middle post that was added and also the floor system was a little bit low at this point so in order to get the thickness out of our concrete I had to dig down a little bit more. Obviously this was an afterthought otherwise I would have done this with the auger uh, earlier when I dug all the other holes. But you know hindsight is 2020 as they say and I probably needed the workout. This dirt during the winter and into the spring is relatively easy to work uh, with a shovel or a pick, but in the hot part of the year it gets pretty tough. It's uh, very clay-like um, and this was some pretty tough digging. I did get lucky, I didn't hit any rocks and again no roots, so I was happy about that. But as you'll see, this was fairly unforgiving. And I hadn't swung a pick in a while. So that was fun. of you apprentices out there this is the type of work that in your early years we all try to avoid but this is also the work that will strengthen your back your shoulders your arms and actually your legs as well so if you're going to be serious about being a tradesman you're gonna to have to dig <laughs> and there is an art to it
I was moving with a bit of haste here because the very next day we would be pouring concrete and I knew I had to get this ditch dug and my little bit of forming put together for my steel that I was going to put in. And I needed to take pictures and get all of that verified by the engineer before the inspector showed up uh, later this day. It was about 7.30 or 8 in the morning here, I believe, and I think temperature was already around 90 degrees. It was warm. talking with Les um, from the batch plant. Les is probably one of the most seasoned drivers, if not the most seasoned driver uh, from Riley's. And the fella in blue is Jake. And Jake is a great hand and quite a helpful neighbor, as you'll see here. He's a wealth of information, as well as a hard worker and uh, just an all-around great neighbor. In this particular situation, Les and I butted heads a little bit because I wanted him to pull his truck in nice and tight so that we could get the chute all the way to these uh, sauna tubes. And he resisted the idea for a moment and after we bumped heads a bit, uh, we managed to get it done. Thank you. 